Thank you for joining us for part two of the video series, Sources of Support, Exploring Resources for Postpartum Depression. Today, we're highlighting maternal mental health professionals who are important supporters for women experiencing symptoms of PPD. The speakers joining me are doulas who are doing amazing work to support women before, during, and after pregnancy. Ann Grauer is an advanced birth and postpartum doula and trainer. She's also a board certified lactation consultant. We also welcome Tanya Daniel, a donor certified birth doula and trainer. She's also a Lamaze certified childbirth educator and lactation consultant. And Dr. Robin Elise Weiss, an advanced certified birth doula and trainer with a certificate in trauma informed care. Thank you all for joining us today. Tanya, let's start with you. Tell us what a doula is and the type of support that they can provide. A doula is a non-medical trained professional who is there to be a part of the support team for that uh, childbearing family. We provide uh, informational support, physical support, and emotional support um, during pregnancy, during childbirth, and during that postpartum period. Um, we can do things like um, talking through decision making. Um, assistance with, you know, talking with providers. We're part of the team. We're not taking the place of anybody. And so part of what um, a lot of people understand is that there are a lot of different types of doulas. There's birth doulas that are most common, um, as well as, as, as well as commonly known as the postpartum doulas. And they work during different time periods, but they also work, can work together to support those um, childbearing families during this time period. And Anne, if you'd like to add to that and just tell us a bit more on the types of support doulas provide and also the different types. I know there are many types, as, as Tanya touched on, but if you'd like to expand on that a bit. I think what's wonderful is that birth doulas um, work really hard with families who are going through the birthing process as they're anticipating uh, the birth happening. And then once they're in the middle of labor, they're with them contraction to contraction, so that they're helping them through that entire process seamlessly. Um, beyond that, what happens is we also have postpartum doulas. Sometimes we have families who are even lucky enough to have both kinds of doulas, and we do a warm handoff to each other, where the postpartum doula then is in your home uh, for the days and even weeks after you've given birth, several hours at a time each day, helping you as you're getting to know your baby and getting to know this new version of yourself. How does a woman go about finding a doula? Robin, I understand there's a directory. Yes, Dona International, we have been around for 32 years and we have been training doulas ever since, both birth and postpartum doulas. So you can go to dona.org, D-O-N-A.org to look at a directory to find a doula in your area. Dona also has, no matter where you find your doula, a really wonderful guide on how to interview a doula to make sure that you are a good fit. And can you tell us about a hospital-based doula program? I understand that this is a growing trend. So each individual hospital will handle their doula program a little bit differently if they have one. Some of them, the doulas are employees of the hospital. Sometimes they have a referral list that they work off of. Uh, it would be important to ask the hospital how they manage the doula program. Uh, but what's great is that they have already vetted the doulas. And for many people, that takes a lot of concern out of the way, especially if they're concerned about having to interview a number of doulas. But it only works at those institutions where they have those programs in place. And then we have community-based doula programs. And Tanya, can you tell us more about that and how someone could access a community-based doula? Yes. So community-based doula programs are things that are uh, programs that are now that are really starting to pop up in a lot of different places, um, mainly because just like um, Robin had mentioned, there is a directory for a donor and a lot of other um, organizations that have certified doulas. But there are some people in certain areas that don't have access to those um, or they don't have anybody in their communities that um, that are certified or have those. So those community-based programs are programs where members of the community are providing those culturally humble, culturally sensitive care to the people that are in their community. So you have people in the community trained to support people in the community. 
Um, and so what I normally tell people to do, if there's not um, a doula that they can find this, you know, in any of those directories, to really try to find um, local doula collectives, sometimes community health centers that have programs, some of them get grant funded to be able to have it because of the um, the um, the lack of resources that are in that community, local health departments, and any um, organization that may have a health focus may also have community-based um, doulas that are in those programs. And I know as you work with a doula or select a doula, you want to be comfortable with that individual. You want to make sure they understand your community or your specific needs. And I know, Tanya, you work specifically with your own community, and I'd love to hear more about that. When I'm working with families, particularly families that are in um, under-resourced communities or um, uh, communities that have maybe a less representation um, in the doula communities like African-American populations, I usually tell them to, to look at those organizations that are in there that really know what they're, um, the things that they're having to deal with and can be able to draw in those resources and give them information that's culturally relevant to what they're having to deal with. And I also tell them to look at, like um, Robin had mentioned before, are they compatible? And the last thing I normally tell people to do is even though you may have a wide variety of doulas to choose from, make sure that you click with them, that your goals align and that you're compatible. Because if you trust that person, then you're more likely to listen to them and they can listen to you to find out what needs you have as far as your mental wellness and making sure that you have a satisfying experience. Be working in a rural community, you become very um how do you say, very accustomed to not having a lot of different resources. <laughs> and so they, you end up working with people in different capacities. And so one of the things that I usually recommend is finding out, you know, who people are in the community who provide those services, who can provide counseling, um, but also looking at, um, you know, in those, in those areas, you know, where you can find um, access to things a lot of times virtually. Um, whether they're online and things like that, uh, online or support groups, because those may be the only access and, and points that people have. And so, you know, like Anne um, and Robin had mentioned, connecting other people to doulas, uh, specifically postpartum doulas, and getting them access to that type of care, because that's almost like a first responder when it comes to that. Because, you know, when we have in those rural communities, we don't have people getting um, really quick access to their doctor's appointments because the travel, travel time is so far um, in the distance. And so having a, a postpartum doula who's been trained, who knows the signs and symptoms of um, postpartum depression and those mood disorders and being able to refer them, um, those are things that are really life-saving for a lot of people, even though they may not be able to have something, somebody physically there to talk with, to actually have somebody they can talk to online. I wanted to ask Robin, what would you like new moms to know about PPD and the screening you provide? I think one of the things that's really important for people to understand is that depression can occur in pregnancy. It can occur after the birth in the postpartum period, and it can also occur in the partners. Having a trusted partner like a doula, as Anne said, who knows you really well, um, doulas have been many of them trained to do postpartum depression screening. And it is a normal part of my practice. And as I train doulas, I train doulas to provide this care for families so that even though physicians and midwives and pediatricians may also be trying to screen, there are people we know who are falling through the cracks. A doula is somebody who is in the thick of it with you, um, whether it be a birth doula or a postpartum doula, they are following up with you in the postpartum period in a way that no other medical healthcare provider is. And so by having that doula, we can hopefully find somebody who is experiencing PPD sooner and get them help so that they feel better. A doula can also be very helpful when it comes to women who have experienced traumatic birth. Can you tell us more about that, Robin? The National Institutes of Health say that 45% of women in the United States experience a traumatic birth. And we know that if you've experienced a traumatic birth, it makes it more likely that you will suffer from postpartum depression or one of the other perinatal mood and anxiety disorders. And that makes it really important for people to understand, you know, ways that they can minimize the risk of having a traumatic birth. Or if you have somebody who's had a previous traumatic birth and they come to a new pregnancy, having that birth doula to help them walk through to minimize that trauma 
and do, as Ann said, that warm handoff to that postpartum doula to make sure that they are able to have that support from the pregnancy all the way through the postpartum period. That is going to be the best way that we can handle that. So again, hoping for prevention and then being able to screen and recognize when somebody is having difficulty. As we wrap up this video, I'd like to ask all of you a similar question. I know you've worked with hundreds, perhaps thousands of moms, and you've made these incredible connections and you each have these personal success stories or stories of hope. If you wouldn't mind sharing one of those stories, and I'll start with you, Robin. I know along with those connections that you make and those stories you may have to share, you are also providing screening tools to each and every mom you encounter. I'll share a story from my own personal um, doula clients. And I, I screen, I, I screen everybody, right? I screen both them and their partners. And I give them a tool called the Edinburgh perinatal depression scale. And I ask them to report multiple times on what their number is on this score. And one of the numbers, um, you know, one, one client texted me just the number 14, and that number is indicative of postpartum depression. And so I, I was able to reach out to her. And later she said, after we had gotten her help and gotten her feeling better, she said she would not have been able to call a provider, even one that she had a relationship with and say, I think I'm depressed, but she could text the number 14. And she knew that I would come and help her because I knew what that meant and that I would help her get the care that she needed so that she could feel better and enjoy her postpartum period an incredible tool for someone who may not have the words to ask for help. And a similar question for you, Tanya, I know that you're working in, in communities and populations that um, you are specifically connected to. And if you wanted to share a bit about that and where your career is focused. Yeah, exactly. Um, as we've, I've mentioned before, a lot of my work happens in rural communities and specifically as dear to my heart, along with Af African-American Black populations. Um, uh, it's no secret that a lot of times when it comes to mental health issues, it still is a stigma. And uh, specifically in the populations that I'm in, that you know you don't tell, talk about when you're feeling down. You don't talk about um, when when something's not feeling right. You just kind of push through it. Um, so one of the things that I've done is really making sure that you know normalizing it as is more so of of more so not just saying that it's something that uh, we can still push and sweep under the rug, but more so just talk about it and making sure people understand what some of the signs and symptoms are. And a lot of times that means looking at their support system, people who are around them, who live with them, who are in their homes and their schools and their churches know those signs as well. So they look at it and saying, okay, this is something that is not normal. This is something that this person needs some help with, and we're going to support this person. So I'll actually just really making sure that they understand what the signs and symptoms are and teaching them ways of how they can support those families so they can get the, the help that they need and providing those resources. So a lot of my work has been doing that and really educating not just the particular person that's giving birth or has, the, has a child, but really talking with the family and the support system to making sure they have a strong foundation to stand. And, on. and similar question for you. Is there a story or a moment that you would like to share? Oh, so many stories come to mind, but I think one of my favorites is a client who, with the birth of her first child and her second child, uh, they had not access to a care, and she had struggled greatly with postpartum depression and anxiety after both of those births. And um, it took her a long time to recognize what was going on, to be brave enough to seek help. And when she found herself pregnant the third time, she learned somewhere about doulas. So she made certain that she chose the birth doula to help her get ready for this big event that she was concerned about. And um, she said that the, the birth doula helped her to feel like she wasn't alone that there was someone in the room who was there just for her, no matter what. And that she came out of the birth feeling like all of her needs had been met, even though not everything was perfect. 
her needs had been met and that made the difference to her. And then in postpartum, she chose a postpartum doula and she had several weeks of care in her home where someone was in there to say, this is your time for you and your baby to get to know each other. And we need to make sure that you're getting to do the things that every person needs to be able to do. Make sure you've had a meal, make sure you've slept, make sure you've showered so that you feel like a person still because you are. And as she went through her postpartum period with this doula in her home, making sure that things were being taken care of so that she could do those things, she said that when she came to the end of this postpartum period, she looked back and she realized that with her first two births, she could not wait for postpartum to end because it was so miserable for her. And she suffered so greatly. And with her third one, little get a little choked up on this, she never wanted postpartum to end because she felt like she finally had what she needed all along. Thank you for sharing that, Anne. These are words of hope. And I think that is a message that all three of you have shared and with the incredible work that you do and the services you provide. Thank you for your time today. Thank you for telling us more about the work of a doula and how to find a doula. And I'd like to thank everybody who joined us for video two, and we hope you'll join us for our future videos as well. 